Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today and hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. You know, if you're going to have any kind of joy in your life, first thing I would say is get all the help you can. <laughs> if there's anybody who needs healing, I'd be the first one to admit I do. You have to find a sliver of light in your life that bursts through the gray clouds and adds some perspective so you realize it's not all gloom and doom. Suffering and sorrow are not permanent. No matter how bad things may seem, you will smile again, you will laugh again, you will feel joy and love again. So skillful means in yoga is like distracting um, and using forgetful inattention. Like when you distract a child from whatever they're doing by offering it something ice cream, like ice cream. So you use skillful means to deepen your understanding of life, to act wisely, and of course always to develop compassion. Like in the Tonglen practice where whatever's going on in your life, you stop and you think about how many other people are undergoing the same kind of situation as yourself and you reach out to them as if you could help them and you do that in a way that you couldn't understand before because before we were all so self-centered it was all about me but now it's about others and uh, if for whatever reason the feelings you're going through are, are tough to be mindful of or be distracted from you have to reach out to something greater than yourself and call upon the forces of benevolence by whatever name Humble your heart in vulnerability and feel the deep innocence and sincerity that's in your heart so that whatever benevolence there does exist in life can unfold you. Today I want to tell the story about the Indian bird. It's a Sufi tale from Rumi. Once there was a merchant who kept a bird in a cage and he was going to go to India to visit. He was asking everybody in the household what they want and he asked the bird uh, whether he could bring anything. And uh, he says, yeah. You can give me my freedom. He says, no, I'm not going to do that. He says, well, all right. Well, then when you go there, you happen to go to the area where my relatives are. So you just go out to this part of the forest and let them know that I'm in captivity so they won't worry about what happened to me. He says, sure, I can do that for you. So he goes off on his trip. He does the shopping for the wife and the family. And then he goes to the part of the forest where the bird was captured. And he, and he calls out and says, oh, just know that your relative is captured in my house. In the moment that he said that a bird exactly the same species as the one he has in captivity fell down out of the tree, apparently shocked to death, had a heart attack when he realized what happened to his kin. So when he went back home and he gave the gifts to everybody, the bird said, so do you have any good news for me? What my relative said? He says, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you I have some bad news. As soon as I said you were captive, one of the birds fell out of the tree and dropped dead at my feet. <sighs> The moment the bird heard that, he spun around in the cage, and he too also kind of collapsed. And the merchant said, oh my God, the news killed him. The shock was too much. Mm, so bad, so sorry. So he opened the cage and put the bird on the windowsill. And as soon as he did that, the bird revived and flew to another tree and said, hey, thank you so much for bringing the information to me about how I might free myself. And then the bird flew away, no longer captive. Uh, the Sufis say this is a tale of indirect learning, and I don't know if this is like similar to the Jesus' tale of be in the world but not of it, but there's something about how in one way we seem to be held captive, and if we pretend we're dead, or at least allow one part of ourselves to not be involved in the game in the same way, it doesn't keep us captive. In some way it seems like that gives us freedom. And so can we learn indirectly from the other things that are around us other ways that we can be free from our own captivity. The ball's in your cart. You've got to figure that out. Hope you have a great week. Subscribe to GabrielHalpern.com. And uh, since I won't be back again till Labor Day, just want to remind everybody, if you go to my website, GabrielHalpern.com, we're starting to take registrations for the Mexico vacation, February 25th to March 4th, 2023, back at Via Shanti in Puerto Morelos. It's our 25th year. It's going to be a big blast. Hope that we can have you there to share with us and otherwise eyes in that next week also I'll be back on wednesday with the first in the next four class series of good vibrations teaching the bhagavad gita as i learned from ramdas in 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 1974 and also add the 10th in a series of 12 dharma talks for flourish next thursday night from eight to nine o'clock 
Uh, you can sign up for that also on my website. And the topic is going to be the contemplative, contemplative path. So I hope I see you and reach out to me. Love to hear from you.